Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm sure you've all been in this situation. There's an amazing scene happening right in front of you, but somehow the autofocus manages to miss the shot and you end up with no images. So annoying. But is this really the camera's fault or are there some things that we can do to eliminate these frustrating moments? If you're struggling with a lot of missed and out of focus images or your camera getting stuck on branches or the background, chances are that your autofocus settings and techniques are all wrong. So let's change that today and let me help you with this video to get you back on track to taking stunning and most importantly, in focus images. And also make sure to watch till the end for my special in the field techniques that will allow you to get the best results. The first area that many people get quite wrong when it comes to the autofocus is to assume that it needs to be super aggressive and almost hyperactive and jump onto the target right away. Of course, we want the camera to focus really fast initially, but most of the autofocus settings we can actually influence don't target the initial autofocusing phase, but they target what happens once the target is acquired. And when it comes to this, for birds and wildlife photography especially, we want the camera to be quite calm and collected and stick to the subject that we focused on initially. If we set up the settings incorrectly and the camera is a bit too hyperactive and jumps around and acts too erratically, what will often happen is that instead of tracking our subject nicely and calmly, the camera will jump on and off the subject or jump onto the background or jump onto something else entering the frame and that's definitely not what we want, is it? So when it comes to setting up the autofocusing system, we want the camera to acquire the target really fast and then track our initial subject no matter what, whether there's a tree entering the frame or something else entering the frame or we're slightly sliding off the subject. In all these cases, we want the camera to stick with our subject. So let's look at some settings that you can change on your camera to get you the best autofocusing results. Of course, when it comes to any kind of action photography or most photography in general, really, I like to set my camera's autofocusing system to continuous tracking AI server on Canon, for instance, or AFC on Nikon and Sony, I think. On Canon cameras, we have a few different settings and autofocusing cases available. On Canon, I usually have the best results when I use case one. In the subsections, I set the acceleration deceleration to minus one and the tracking sensitivity also to minus one. And where possible, I set switching tracked subjects to zero. That basically calms down the autofocus and makes it stick onto your subject without being too hyperactive and it gives me nice and consistent results in the field. When it comes to Nikon, I've tried a lot of different settings, but I actually stuck with the standard settings in the end. With Nikon, we don't have as many options and the main one being the focus tracking with lock-on. And here I set it to three, sort of the middle of the road and the subject motion to steady. When it comes to Nikon, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, I feel like that the different autofocusing areas and autofocusing modes actually have a bigger impact. On Sony, I've also tried a few different settings, but I also had pretty good results, which is the standard settings, where I set the checking sensitivity to standard. If you feel like that the autofocus is still a bit jittery or jumps off your subject, you can then lower some of these settings to make it a bit more sticky and a bit slower and less aggressive. And if you guys want to see how I set up my cameras in detail, make sure to check out my camera setups guides that are linked for you down there in the description. Another setting we should probably check or change on our cameras is the release or focus priority. I always set my cameras to release priority. That means whenever I press the shutter button, the camera is taking a photo. If you set it to focus priority, the camera will only take a photo if it has confirmed autofocus lock. However, that means that at times you press the shutter button and the camera will not take a photo because it hasn't confirmed the autofocus lock and that can be quite annoying if it doesn't take a photo when you want it to take a photo. And you might actually miss a great moment because not having confirmed focus lock doesn't mean that the photo you're taking is not sharp. So you might actually miss a great moment when you have focus priority activated. So I would always change it to release priority. On Canon, it seems like the setting isn't as relevant and only affects the one-shot mode, not the continuous tracking. Sony also has a setting that I think is called pre-autofocus, where the camera tries to already pre-acquire your target before you're even pressing any buttons on the camera. That can work great in certain situations, but for bird and nature photography, I would say it's not very helpful because it's very likely that it could also focus on the branch or your background or something else, and that's not what we want, of course, so I would usually turn that setting off. Of course, we want to make the life as easy as possible for our cameras, and so it helps to define the subject it's supposed to track as much as possible. 
On Canon, there isn't as many options. So if you're photographing wildlife, you just set it to animal and you're basically done. On Sony, you can send it to animal and bird. So whether you're photographing birds or animals, it's important that you're selecting the right subject there. And on Nikon, it's usually animals, except for the Z9 with the new firmware, where you can now also select birds or animals. Now, this can be a little bit annoying if you're switching between birds and animals a lot. And I would suggest that you then assign switching between the different subjects on a certain button so you can really quickly change that in the field without having to go to the menu. But what's important here to define what you're wanting to focus as much as possible, because that will definitely make it easier for the camera to find your subject. Because if you leave it on auto, for instance, the camera have to think about a lot more things when it focuses instead of just putting it to bird when you're photographing birds, for instance. The easiest cameras in terms of the autofocus to work with and photograph in the field and also to set up is usually Canon for me because instead of having to set up certain zones or different autofocusing areas, the whole area autofocus on Canon works really well. So you basically half press the shutter button or press one of the rear buttons, the camera will find the subject all over your viewfinder and track it all over your viewfinder. On Sony and Nikon, this can also work well, but in most cases, it's better to use a different autofocusing area or smaller area to help the camera to find the subject initially. One issue you will experience with all mirrorless cameras, unfortunately, is that they have the tendency to sometimes go right past your subject and get stuck onto the background. And then it's quite hard to get it off the background onto your subject again. So we need to find ways in the field to quickly be able to get from the wrong focusing position back to the right focusing position and onto our subject. That's why I personally usually assign double back button autofocusing to all my cameras, but you can also, for instance, have the shutter button focusing and one of the rear buttons for focusing if you don't like pure back button autofocusing. In either case, though, I think it's important that we have different autofocusing modes assigned to different buttons to be able to really quickly change between the different modes in the field to allow us to sort of circumvent some of the issues we sometimes experience with the mirrorless cameras. On Canon, my base autofocusing mode is the traditional spot autofocusing mode, similar to the autofocusing that you're sort of used from your DSLR cameras. And I assign that to the shutter button or the star button on the back of the camera. So I can move my autofocusing field around and whenever I have press the shutter button or the star button on the back of the camera, the camera will focus on exactly the spot that I've pre-selected with my autofocusing field. And then on the second button in the rear, usually the AF on button, I assign the eye tracking to. So whenever I press the AF on button in the back, it overrides the other button and it starts to track the bird with the eye tracking all over my viewfinder. And if I let go, then it reverts back to the spot autofocusing. So that gives me the best of both worlds and can easily change between the two different systems whenever I need to interfere with the autofocus, for instance. But in most cases, I just need to press the AF on button and the camera easily finds the bird. And if you're unsure about how to set up your own cameras and your own camera's autofocusing systems, I also have some detailed PDF guides available down there in the description. Some cameras and lenses also have the ability to recall a certain focus position that you can program into the camera at the start of the shoot. And then usually you press a button on the lens and the camera will instantly bring back focus to that spot. So that can be very helpful in the case that your camera, for instance, jumps onto the distant background because with the press of just one button, you can get it to jump back onto your perch or subject, for instance. While the Canon autofocus is very easy to set up and quite easy to use in the field, when it comes to Nikon, the autofocusing system and setting it up is a little bit more involved because typically the whole area autofocus works well in video tracking, but for focus, it lags a little bit behind and it's not as reliable as Canon friends. So whenever I use Nikon cameras in the field, I like to use a mix of the wide area and the 3D tracking and that definitely gives you the best and most consistent results. At the same time, that means also that we need to set up different buttons on the camera with different autofocusing modes so we can easily switch between the different modes. Typically, my base autofocusing mode on the Nikon cameras is a wide area custom or wide area large. And I assign the focusing for that to the shutter button or the display button in the back of the camera. And then I assign the 3D tracking to the AF on button. So whenever I press the AF on button, 3D tracking takes over and tracks my subject all over the viewfinder. However, I find it difficult to find a subject initially with the 3D tracking because the field is so small. That's why using the wide area large first to find your subject is usually the best idea. And then whenever I have acquired the focus with the wide area large, I press the AF on button and the 3D tracking takes over from the wide area large and tracks from the exact spot that I was tracking before with the wide area and gives me nice tracking all over the viewfinder and the best consistent results, at least for perch birds. 
When it comes to action photography or birds in flight, especially with a water background, I found that the 3D tracking then doesn't work as well and a more narrow, longer, custom wide area actually gives me the best results. So with Nikon, it's really depending on the situation which autofocusing mode works the best and switching between the different ones, mainly a wide area and the 3D tracking has given me the best results. And lastly, on the Nikon bodies, I also assigned the spot autofocus to one of the front buttons on the camera. So whenever I need to manually focus on a certain area, I can press one of the front buttons and then I'll have the spot autofocus activated. And setting up the camera that way with the focusing for the wide area on the shutter button or the display button, the 3D tracking on the AF on button and the spot tracking one of the front buttons, I have all the different autofocusing modes available with just the click of one of my fingers. On Sony cameras, and I've mainly used the A1, we have different autofocusing areas available. And I usually like to use the spot areas or some of the zones. And both of these are then also available with tracking and without tracking. And that's actually a really cool implementation that allows us to set up the autofocusing quite easy and a bit differently to the other cameras. So on the A1, I assign either the shutter button or the AF on button in the back of the camera to AF on with tracking. That means whichever area I've selected, like a spot, the camera will engage autofocus and engage eye tracking when I press one of these buttons. And then I assign a different button, like the AEL button in the back of the camera, for instance, to just AF on. That means if I have selected like spot autofocus, for instance, and I press that button, the camera will now just do like the traditional autofocus. Whereas if I press the AF on button, the camera will pick the subject and also track it. So that means I can stay in the spot autofocus or certain zone and depending on which button I press in the back, the camera will either just focus or focus and engage the tracking. What I would also recommend though is that you then have a different button that lets you select the different autofocus areas. For instance, go from spot to the different size zones and you can toggle through these quite quickly by pressing a button. So I really like that implementation and the only thing I found with Sony is that most of the time some of the larger sort of zones works quite well in finding the subject, especially for birds in flight as well. But if there's water involved, for instance, or your subject is a bit smaller in the frame, using like the spot autofocus with a smaller field works much better and you're helping the camera to know what you want to focus on and then track it quite well. And now that you're on the way to basically only taking sharp photos, I think it would also be a great idea to improve your editing skills. And I would love to help you with that with my masterclass and my pro sets. These will not only help you to get better results, but also increase your confidence when it comes to image editing. With my pro sets, I allow you with just one click to get amazing results. And with my masterclass, I teach you step by step everything you need to know in Photoshop to get amazing results, get better results faster and be more happy in the end. So if that's of interest to you, make sure to check these out down there in the description. Another feature on our cameras that I like to enable is constant manual autofocus, which is often disabled in modern mirrorless cameras. And this is something I think is quite helpful. For instance, if your camera gets stuck on the background, you can easily bring it back with the manual autofocusing ring. Most cameras also have a very annoying setting that's usually hidden behind some strange words like retract lens on power off on Canon, for instance. And what that means is that when you turn your camera off or it goes on to standby, it forgets the last focusing position. And when you turn the camera back on, it's basically all blurry in your viewfinder and we don't really want that. So I would recommend to change that setting so the camera will remember the last focusing position when you turn it off or when it goes into standby. So when you turn it back on, it's right back onto where you last focused on. That will definitely help you to not miss the shot in the field. So now we've gone through some of the most important settings when it comes to the autofocus and I think you're on a good way with these settings to get better results in the field. And if you want to reread through some of these settings, I've also linked them for you down there in the description. But there's actually more we can do to help the autofocus in the field and that's to put it in a position to succeed. That always starts by pre-focusing on the area that we expect our subject to appear in. So for instance, if you're photographing a bird on a perch, I would always pre-focus on the perch. Or if you're photographing birds in flight, I was always pre-focused on a certain distance similar to where I would expect a bird to appear in my frame. Because it's simply so much easier for the camera to focus on the subject when it can basically see it already, rather than trying to find the subject from a completely defocused state. So by pre-focusing in the right area, you can not only cut down the time that it takes to acquire the subject, but also help the camera to be more accurate and faster. Another issue I often see with people in the field is that they start focusing too early or for too long. 
It takes the cameras a lot of effort to track and follow your subject along and the smaller it is in your frame, the more likely the camera is also to jump off it. And the same I've noticed for focusing for too long. If you focus for too long on a certain subject, the camera tends to get a bit more hyperactive and also jump off. So we want to avoid both of these cases. So let's say you're on a cliff and photographing ospreys, for instance, and you see the bird in a great distance coming towards you. If you now start focusing right away, chances are that you somehow will lose focus by the time the bird's actually in a perfect position. So instead of focusing all the time, I would kind of bump my focus. I focus on the bird a little bit, let it come closer, focus on it again, let it come closer and focus on it again. And then by the time it's almost in the perfect spot, just before then, I press the focus button and stay on it this time and also press the shutter button to take photos. And by doing it that way, I basically guarantee that I have focus at the right time and the right moment and get the best results. If you focus too early, usually you have lost the subject before it actually gets to the good spot. I notice with a lot of mirrorless cameras as well that they seem to have the tendency to always lose focus or have to focus jump off when something sudden happens. For instance, I was photographing the rifle birds with the R5 and when they're sitting there, the camera was focusing fine, but the second it was ripping up the wings, it would often lose focus onto the background or some other area of the bird. So in this case, the best technique was to not actually focus on the bird and wait until the bird actually ripped up the wings and then start focusing again because then the camera wouldn't be distracted and stick nicely to the bird's head. And I had a similar issue when I was photographing the Ospreys with the Z8 or the Z9, for instance. Whenever I was focusing on the bird before it was taking off, it would often lose the focus on the bird just the moment it would jump off the perch. That sudden movement of the wings just distracted the autofocus. So in that case, I got the best results by waiting until the bird was just off the perch and then started focusing on it. And in those cases, the tracking worked really well. Whereas if I was focusing on the bird for a long time and then it would rip up the wings, the focus would often be lost. So in these cases, it's kind of like focusing too long, what we said as well. Waiting until the moment the action is actually happening seems to give me better results than focusing on the bird the whole time and then potentially missing it when some of the action is actually happening. Now this sounds kind of counterintuitive because you kind of want to get that action with the wings up, but usually you still get the action anyways and you're helping the autofocus to not be distracted. And lastly, there's one more tip I can give you as well. With a lot of lenses, you have a focus limiter. That means you can set a certain distance where the lens only focuses in that area. With few lenses, you have a few options. With some lenses, you only have a few options. So this doesn't work with all lenses. But whenever you know that your subject will only be in a certain area, for instance, it will always be further away than like 10, 15, 20 meters, it makes sense to use the focus limiter because it stops the camera from hunting in a certain area. For instance, if all the birds are far away, setting it to focusing only from like 10 meters makes a lot of sense because it just makes the autofocus a little bit faster. What are your biggest struggles with the autofocusing? Is it the settings? Is it the techniques in the field or both? I really hope that this video will help you to be less frustrated and more successful in the field. So make sure to let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Give me a thumbs up for the video. Check out my channel membership and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye, guys.